There's one example I always like to do with discrete time second order linear recurrence relations. It's a, it's a classic. It's a lot of fun. This is the computation of the Fibonacci numbers. Recall the Fibonacci sequence? It's a sequence. We're going to call it F or rather Fn. The terms of the sequence are 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, keeps going, keeps going. This is generated by a second order linear recurrence relation. You may be familiar with this. You can see the pattern from that sequence of numbers. Fn is really Fn minus 1 plus Fn minus 2. That is, each term is the sum of the previous two terms. Now, this doesn't quite fit the pattern of what we just did, so let's shift the indices over by two time steps, if you will, and move everything over to one side of the equation. What we get is fn plus 2 minus fn plus 1 minus fn equals 0. That means that your a constant is plus 1, b and c are negative 1. Now, this has a characteristic polynomial, lambda squared minus lambda minus 1 equals 0. What are the roots of that? The roots of that, thanks to the quadratic formula, are 1 plus or minus square root of 5 divided by 2. And oh my gosh, what is that? It's the golden ratio and the silver ratio that boom just come out of the system wow it's like golden fibonacci spiral cosmic leonardo da vinci amazingness no it's just eigenvalues that's all it is roots of a very very simple quadratic polynomial so what do we do well if we want to compute the nth fibonacci number and we don't want to do all of those additions there's a simple general solution we know that the eigenvalues, lambda 1 and 2, are 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2. So the general solution for Fn is some constant C1 times lambda 1, 1 plus root 5 over 2, to the n, plus C2 times lambda 2, 1 minus root 5 over 2, to the n. Well, okay, but uh, what are those constants? How do we solve for those? Oh, we can use the initial conditions. The first term in the sequence, f0, is equal to 0. That means we substitute in n equals 0, and what do we get? We get 0 is c1 times lambda 1 to the 0, plus c2 times lambda 2 to the 0. That is, c1 plus c2, that's equal to 0. c2 is minus c1. That's not enough information. We need one more equation. So let's use n equals 1. f1, the first term in the sequence, is 1. That means 1 equals c1, I'm just going to call it c, times lambda 1 to the first power, plus c2, that's really minus c, times lambda 2 to the first power. A little bit of algebra there, we get some cancellations, and what do I get? I get c times square root of 5. That means that this constant c is really 1 over root 5, and my general expression for the nth Fibonacci number is 1 over root 5 times quantity 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the n minus 1 over root 5 times quantity 1 minus root 5 over 2 to the n. Well then, are you happy? Are you happy now? We have a formula for the nth Fibonacci number. I don't know. I look at this formula and I'm a little worried. How am I going to compute something like, I don't know, the 5,000th Fibonacci number? Am I, am I really going to take that 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the 5,000th power and then the 1 minus root 5 over 2 to the 5,000th power that add and multiply and, oh boy, this does not look like it's going to be all that helpful. Can't we just plug it into a computer or have the computer do it? No, I mean, what if, what if n is like 10 billion or something like that? What do we do? Let's think dynamically. Let's think about these two eigenvalues. That first one, 1 plus root 5 over 2, I don't know, that's about like 1.6 something. That is an unstable eigenvalue. 
powers of that, they keep getting bigger and bigger. But the other guy, lambda 2, 1 minus root 5 over 2 is approximately minus 0.6. That is less than 1 in absolute value. That means this is a stable eigenvalue. That means that as n gets large, this term goes to 0. So we can, in the limit, as n goes to infinity, start saying some things about the behavior of the Fibonacci numbers. In that limit, fn plus 1 is approximately the same thing as 1.6 something times fn. Or if you like, if I want to compute exactly what fn is, it's approximately 1 over root 5 times 1.6 yada 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 to the nth power. Now that can be computed for large values of n pretty quickly by doing a couple of old-fashioned tricks with logarithms and simple multiplication. This really does lead to a good way to compute large Fibonacci numbers, and the way that we did it was by thinking dynamically and ignoring the stuff that goes quickly to zero. That's a cool example.